<laughs> right, yes, lovely. Thank you much. Good evening, everybody out there. Um, thank you very much for coming back. Um, hope you can will continue to hear me all the way through this. Uh, and you can see the, the first slide there. Uh, just switch the two words around gizmos and gadgets for tonight. I'm going to be a bit flexible in terms of just when I, I've got about three or four different potential stopping points for tonight. So we'll see what happens there. Um, obviously, that's me. If you want to get hold of me, that's my email address, stevethedoc at hotmail.com. And including being on the England website a little later on, presentation and lots of other things that I'll refer to both this week and next week are on the website that I look after, which is listed there, tiny.cc forward slash athletic TM. Notice the capital letters are crucial there. OK, so um, with that said, um, if you. Haven't already moved your video image of me out of the way, use that little icon at the end of the arrow there. And. Just to say that I'm getting closer to my biggest gadget or gizmo. People have known me for a long time, known that I've uh, wanted a, a UPS truck as my technical room. Um, that's it. Um, an actual model one may actually be with me for next week, I'm hoping. i um, not certain if they'll have the, the logos on the side by that time. But um, reason for a UPS truck would be, um, I, I just love those trucks and I just think it'd be really nice to turn it into a mobile technical room that could actually be going um, everywhere. Um, yes, Keith Davis and Malcolm Rogers are probably both shaking their heads quite uh, bad now, but uh, just thought we'd get that little one in for you. Uh, hopefully it would even take my pole vault uprights. Um, those of you who've not met me before, I've just kind of listed a um, number of things which I think have contributed to me being around this sort of gadgets and gizmos type of thing side of stuff there. Um, I first started officiating back in 83 with the, with Shaftesbury Barnet Harriers. Um, and I've just kind of summed up 20 years there with a whole load of typical club things, um, county things uh, for Middlesex and the south of England side of things. And I guess it was probably 2002, the first time I actually did a management role, technical management away from the club side of things at the National Police Championships and then managed to have quite an amazing 21st century start um, with a whole host of technical manager appointments, equipment officer appointments and clerk of course appointments, which has gradually seen me keep one m big point for me as when I'm on the technical team, and that is that no issue that pops up at any particular meeting will defeat us. We may not have the right gadget or gizmo for it on that day, but we will solve the issue that day. And that then prompts me to go away and acquire somehow the be a best gadget or gizmo for that particular thing going forward. And some of those stories might pop up as we go through this. Some of you who were with me at the start last week, I've taken out all the Menti links, questions, quizzes at this moment in time, because that's not compatible with this system. But we'll try and still have a little bit of interactive stuff um, a little bit later on. Um, of course, your first big, most important gadget and gizmo is the UK rule book. This is um, this year's that's uh, recently come out. So a big shout out at the bottom there to Paul Kirkpatrick from the uh, Southern Officials Association, who made a careful trip to post mine out for me. Um, just wanted to remind you, one image on the right hand side there, very blurred, but to point out that we get uh, gray text, there's purple text, there's green text. Look at the double lines on the left for things that have changed and also single lines that are in purple on the right of things that have changed to try and help you navigate your way through your rule book, which needs to be by your side at all times. Unfortunately, I can't have by my side yet because I haven't actually seen a hard copy of it yet. 
but I believe this is the front cover of the new one. Um, and of course, they've changed the numbering system, which will come up a little bit later on. Um, next week, I'm going to focus a lot around uh, digital gadgets and gizmos um, and resources on those side of things. And if anybody wants to get a head start on looking at any of that, um, that's the menu page from my website listed on the right hand side there. Um, it started really as just a place for me to keep my digital stuff as I was becoming more technical, technically minded. Um, and then gradually people have given me stuff that have fitted in with other disciplines, have acquired other stuff. And so it's all there. Just click on the things and see what you can find in there. Um, best of luck with it. And if you have anything, especially coming up from this evening, that you would like to contribute to, to the, the site, just let me know and uh, send it to me. Uh, I'll put it up and give you credit for it on, on the pages where it appears. So I thought I might start with possibly what might become the most expensive gadget, tongue in cheek, uh, both in terms of equipment from the athlete's point of view, those uh, infamous shoes and all the text on the right hand side there about the uh, regulations for shoes and that important thing in the green text at the bottom that the uh, referee could request the athlete to hand over the shoe for further investigation by world athletics not by us at the meeting necessarily which kind of i guess means that i won't actually need to be buying uh, a mobile x-ray machine um, unless what any of you've got one going free uh, that we can stick in my ups truck to check out the what's inside those soles but it is a um, world athletics investigation we'll be do undertaking that here thought we'd just see if we can do our first bit of interaction side of things let me just in the chat, you should just see popped up a little link, cami.app forward slash and a whole load of letters. If you click on that, it should open something else on your machine. Don't panic if it doesn't, just come back to the screen here. Um, should allow you to um, annotate this picture, which was the, the technical tent at Swansea in 2014 for the European para championships and my you can if it opens up on your machine shouldn't ask you to log in anybody got in without asking it to log in Just somebody say whether or not you get in down the left a lovely somebody's in Okay, a couple of people that's asking for a login. I'm not certain why. A couple of people have got in all right. Um, just down the left hand side, you've got some icons. You can get a draw tool, see if you could actually draw on your image to indicate where you think any of the gadgets and gizmos might be looking into the center of the technical tent. You could add a little bit of text if you wanted to. Uh, you may see other people scribbling all over it at the same time. I will be able to get a copy of that at the end and just see where people think things are. Just whilst you're doing that, let me just. Ready. Okay, you can keep adding to that as we go through. But we'll. That was the main part of sort of the admin side of the tech tent. You can see why I'm after that UPS truck with those toolboxes and all the other stuff that carry around. 
and <clears throat> this was the equipment officer's place which i think should be on the same you should have three pictures come down to you on a pdf that you can annotate so again if you wish to you could actually try and annotate where you think what gadget, gadgets gizmos you can spot in the equipment officer's area or down in where i would call the the video officer's area or and or the clerk's area for kitting out stuff we're very fortunate to have a tent that was basically the size of a whole tennis court there although a lot of it got taken up we were also the storage for all the racing chairs and the seated frames hopefully you can see quite a lot of things there but let's see if we can move on a little bit whilst you're drawing side of things we're just going to see if we can have a little bit of bingo going this evening and again in your chat box there should be 21 links randomly select one some of you there may be more than one of you choosing the same one a little bingo card should open up with hopefully a whole load of roles at a meeting and you can annotate them both this week and next week as a gadget comes up I may suggest it's useful in a certain place. You may think it's useful in another role as well. Um, indicate it on your bingo card. And when you get four in a row, horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, you can uh, do a big bingo in the chat shout out for us. And we'll see, see if anybody gets there before we finish tonight. Just wonder if anybody like might like to sort of throw into the chat box um, any comments about this image from this discus circle that was used in Austria uh, a little earlier this year for um, perhaps a little bit of an informal competition, but a competition all the same. I don't know if anybody notices anything that uh, would be oh oh yeah yeah yes yes. Um, is it any wonder when some of the uh, our European compatriots come over to competition in this country and their um, attitude to our using the cage, as, you know, especially in training warm-up facilities? Um, yes, that was that was it. No cage. Um, and next week you might see some other images of uh, other European, another European circuit circle being set up with um, no cage. Um, interesting, uh, some gadgets, gizmos, World Athletics, and if you followed here um, on their website, the three particular things I've been interested in that they have, um, um, all right, Andy Hulse, best place for the coach and, and certain assistant technical managers or, or technical managers. But on World Athletics website, um, interesting spot the shot competition especially for some of us as oldies going back long enough to spot the ball type of things. Um, some of you will be familiar with the the bottom image there, the uh, the Lego, uh, Nicola Evans, and also myself with our Lego people collection for event site setup and conversations. But also interestingly, on the right hand side, they've started to produce a series of resources for um, languages. So different events in a variety of languages. And um, I was looking through that and was very conscious that there were certain languages missing. So I've just added for the pole vault, top right there, just popped up uh, three of our domestic languages here within the United Kingdoms. So of course with Google Translate, um, lots of these could be produced for any specific areas around our athletics meetings at some of our biggest meetings. Um, I am reminded that uh, a number of years ago, I was aware that somebody was producing a whole load of language version cards for use in the, in the call room.
So let's see if we can get down to probably more the kind of gadget and gizmo that if you've been thinking about that you thought you'd see in, in this session. Um, here we go with our calipers <coughs> being used. Uh, here's another version to get that lovely set distance in there. Um, here I use them. I have a set of four for when I'm doing the discus in that they're, they're usually marked up, up here at the top on the outside with 11, 10, 11, 12, 13, as in the distance between that they're going to be set so they can be used to measure the diameter of the rim of the discus six millimeters in as such. <clears throat> Some of you may be wanting to get um, digital calipers or traditional calipers. This is a, a two foot long one um, in order that we can actually measure the diameter of the discus flat. But I've also got this one here that's actually got the longer jaw so we can actually get to actually measure the thickness of the discus at the center. Um, so I can do both of those measurements off of the same long that way and that way. Or you can get a little diddy one that's totally devoted to just going down and meeting the center of the discus to get the thickness there. Um, very nice. This particular set have got the nice flat and pointy bit right at the jaw, which would also make it useful um, when you want to measure, should you ever want to measure the thickness of the soles of any shoes. There we go, in action, working nicely. We'll do the rim as well. Of course, if you don't actually need to have the actual number of the measurement, you just need to know whether it, the discus conforms yes or no. Um, there are a variety of places that you can actually get uh, these yes, no discus gauges from. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about them later, um, where you can get them from in this country. Notice here on the discus that we actually get the, t the maximum and minimum diameter for this particular discus, the actual diameter of the center plate on the discus, and we also get a chance to do that six millimeter in diameter of the rim, all off of one particular gauge in terms of yes or no. This was an interesting discus checker that I came across probably over 10 years ago, courtesy of Peter and Linda Lenton. Um, all the linear measurements can be done for the disc, all the different discus on here in that you cross the top here, different maximum and minimum diameters in here, the different maximum and minimum thicknesses here, the center plate, and over on this side, the actual rim diameters, all on one board that was about, if I remember rightly, about two foot, two foot 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters. So if any of you got a nice garden shed and have got a little project you want, want to happen, you can have a go at doing something like that. I understand from Peter Lenton that um, he had a D&T teacher at school that uh, constructed it for him. To his specifications. Other officials make their own little measuring gadget. This one here was um, loaned to me occasionally by Richard Weston, uh, a little similar to um, the 120, 130 pound metal version that's available from Nerf that you may well see a little bit later on. Again, here we're at doing the thickness, but there's the metal ruler to enable you to actually get the numbers that you might need for those particular meetings. You can of course get the diameters with a lot, lot, lot cheaper. Um, here a couple of set squares 
and a steel ruler allows you to actually measure the diameter there. But of course, you do have to be make sure very careful that you do actually have the two sets, set squares parallel to each other. So enough of discus. Let's, uh, let's just think about linear measurements anyway across all of our uh, facility. Um, here we have a nice wooden folding ruler. Traditionally, in the shops, these are one meter when they're unfolded. This particular one is two meters, which actually enables us to drill a couple of holes in it to assist us in determining the, the location of the center of the two different circles. If I had the, the Menti question coming up after these slides, uh, a big question to you would be, um, unless you're stupid like me and get everything, if you only had the opportunity of having three different tape measures, which would they be? As I go through these, if you've got some thoughts, uh, you might just want to pop those into the chat box this evening. You know, three different tape measures. There's my two meter one, helpful in center circle finding. Um, I've also got one of these marked up for the um, hurdle heights. This was an interesting um, right to cut tape measure where the tape came out at the rounded end here. The flat plate could actually sit on the floor and it was a sort of a cheap version. I used to use it as a cheap um, high jump measurer in that it locked itself very nicely for doing all those kind of measurements. Somebody suggesting 108 and 5 as tapes. Um, not going for your 30s or 50s. Steel or fabric or fiberglass. Oops, that one stayed in, sorry. Uh, just checking up on some of the uh, tape measurements that are coming through in the chat. Uh, just missed somebody talking about the javelin ones. Um, the, the, eight, the eight meter tape can just do that. Um, there are eight and a half meter tapes out now. Uh, 10 meter tapes that look onto your, your belt are a little bit long. Um, somebody saying Omega because uh, why don't we just get all the different EDMs out? Um, somebody seems to have a very nice 100 meter tape there yet to use. That just you haven't found the opportunity or it's a recent acquisition. We'll see. You at Let's give it a couple more moments, see if any more chat tapes come through. Because I suspect on the um, bingo cards, um, we've probably only got field technical equipment officer being ticked off so far. Maybe a bit of track with the, the hurdle tapes. Uh, 60 ADMs. Um, do they have their own UPS track? But let's get back to the presentation. Um, Figured I'd better include the starters, um, especially as probably the most recent um, piece of kit to come into our officiating side of things now are the electronic starting devices. Um, so as a, if you're here tonight as a starter in any capacity, have you had an opportunity of using one? Um, I know there are a number of sets around the country now. But it's uh, certainly the possibly a way of the future, especially with some tracks, local councils not permitting uh, proper firearms to be used. And back to your chat in terms of uh, a homemade contraption, courtesy of Sage Lee and Hammond. Um, what do you where would you use this what would you use this particular gadget for 
I see three particular bolts and a center pin of some sort and a screw top on the top. Yes, there we go. There's three of them in action there. They, they actually do hold the um, EDM prism nice and level for you with the center point exactly where you need it, either on the, the rim of the circle or at the center of the circle as appropriate. Uh, one may be wondering why you want this. Um, I do find myself, when I set up EDMs, I like to try and set them up before anybody else gets around. So quite often there isn't anybody there to help. And so actually trying to get the prism to stand, to balance, whatever, on its own can be tricky. So pulling out one or three of those little gadgets can be very helpful. And a little note there at the bottom of the presentation, just to say, um, watch this space, or not necessarily this space, but watch athletics meetings coming up shortly whenever we get off ground. Um, Andy Hulse and Bob Hammond have been doing some lockdown work with um, EDMs linking straight to computers and straight to some sort of scoreboard, whether it be TV screen or whatever. Um, so we could have that kind of gadget at almost any sort of level of meeting in the future. Here we go. Uh, little um, little quiz for you. We're going to zoom in really close up on a gadget here, a new gadget, uh, courtesy of Bob Haben and John Bancroft. And, uh, and then I'm going to zoom out a number of times. And um, first image, if you can work out what it is, you can award yourself 10 points. And then we'll go down nine, eight, seven. So um, here we go. Very nice and blurred. Um, you're quick off the mark. You could, uh, in the chat box, make some suggestions or you may give the game away. Just give it a couple more moments just in case somebody is trying to type something into the chat box. A switch. I just wonder what we might use a switch for. Okay, let's uh, let's zoom out a little bit for nine points. Well, certainly a switch, but I uh, wonder what it's on. Certainly electrics involved there. Who's that there? John, Mr. John Askew spots a switch. Gosh, Mr. Holse is suggesting a scoreboard. I don't see any TV screen, or is it on the other side? Let's uh, zoom out a little bit further for eight points. Uh, Ken's coming in. Kent Wise, I suspect you may have been past this in a, somebody's garden or seen it at a couple of venues in the south. Let's come on out for seven. And for six, if you haven't got it already. More those clues, five points. So I think somebody's talking about a time clock. It's not actually a time clock, this one. This is indeed uh, an electronic scoreboard that uh, Mr. Hammond and Mr. Bancroft have been working on. And I was delighted when he sent these pictures through to, because the last time I saw it in action was at the, uh, uh, an indoor meet at Lee Valley earlier this year and we were talking to him then and suggesting that we had a cross in it and a bigger decimal point and this photo he's been away and the two of them have adapted it to include that so all the numbers are visible for your traditional scoreboard works off a battery few people reminiscing so if you just uh give me just a couple of moments just to change powerpoints so we didn't get any nasties
And moving on uh, at the half hour mark. Um, at the moment, I believe the school board is is standalone, but uh, knowing Bob's work with the um, EDM to computer side of things, I wouldn't be surprised if some point next season uh, we do see it connected to the computer um, side of things. <clears throat> indeed, somebody's looking at my next image already. And yes, indeed, it is uh, a couple of those um, vacuum cups for, that you used to carry glass around with. Uh, this plastic version is not quite suitable for doing the dents on your truck, Mr. Sage. But um, if you lock this down onto your circle with the hole above the center of the circle, you can put a spike in there to hold your tape. So again, you could actually check out your sectors um, on your solo, on your own. Um, don't know how many times I've, I've been to, to tracks and I'm trying to check those sectors and there's just nobody around at that moment in time. And you just know, but as soon as anybody really gets there, to help you you'll be needed to do other things because you're probably the equipment officer as well that day and all the athletes will be delivering all of their implements but as we seem to move into oh no that was a throwing event so don't forget all your rakes um have you um tested out which rakes work best for you in raking um personally speaking this wooden one style is is still my favorite my go-to um but big plea that um they're getting a bit expensive so if any do break don't go throwing them all away see what you can actually cannibalize and salvage and actually create your own um rake repair box so some of the spikes or some of the other bits and pieces that might just help <coughs> personally speaking I would love these wooden rakes to be about 30 centimeters longer on the handle. That way you could, for me, I could reach all the way across the pit. Um, <clears throat> this one here, I think, judging by this chat box, may find its way down to Bexley and Mr. Askew, John Boy there, who is saying he can repair it for me. I don't think this one's actually got a handle with it any longer. So we're in the long jump section now. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon. We're in the tools section at the moment. Um, the monkey wrenches, um, really useful. Um, small ones and big ones for obviously getting, especially those bolts in the bottom of long jump boards when they're a bit rusty. Um, but they also double up very nicely as... Um, um, these mole grips, monkey wrenches, whichever you want to call them, um, as temporary handles on um, pole vault uprights. Uh, on a couple of occasions, the handle has gone missing at, at a facility. So I've pulled out these, plonked them on, and we can still go operate the pole vault. <clears throat> Always very really not useful to have a, have a socket set. Um, before you go out and buy a set, uh, do stop and think about what actual sizes of sockets are you going to need at an athletics facility. Um, usually not smaller than six and not everything up to 22. Um, this set actually has a nice set of um, screw bits as well for it. Spanners, yeah, Mr. Hulse says 10, 17, 19, and I think you need 21s for the stop boards at the London Stadium. Um, so again, you may just want to get a, a socket set that covers, and then just think about span getting individual spanners rather than spanner sets. So number of spanners to actually suit the individual things that you need rather than a complete set. Pliers. I was uh, delighted probably about 20 years ago, went into Costco and they had a, um, a set of 20 different types of pliers on one particular board going very, very cheap. 
for that time. And this really big one here, if you just notice at the top, it's actually got a bit of a bend. Um, it's, it's my tooth extractor, or rather the one that I can use to put the split pin back into um, pole vault handle winders if they've got dropped out because somebody didn't split them properly. Um, my big fingers can't get into the dainty little hole, whereas that can actually get in there really nicely. Allen keys, again, you know, which ones do you actually need? <clears throat> Uh, you'll need fours and four and a half mils for discus. Uh, you probably need the four, sometimes the five, for actually locking some long jump boards in, especially the Mondo ones. Uh, sixes and eights, possibly for high jump stands. Tens, sometimes twelves for uh, leveling out the different um, long jump boards. Again, check to see whether or not it's a whole set that you need or whether or not you um, can get individual ones. Um, somebody, somebody's talking about, yes, but this is just one socket. I'm not quite certain what went before it. But let me just acquire my inbuilt tech room here. Uh, recent acquisition uh, seems to be eight different sockets all in one piece waiting to see it does have the 17 and the 19 right it doesn't have the extension that you may need for certain occasions <clears throat> mallets hammers put a picture of the of the soft rubber one in um, you will sometimes want an actual metal headed hammer um, but I'm just very conscious that um, somebody was at the world championships in 2017 on the high jump with a hammer bashing the support arm trying to push it back up because it had actually been pulled down a little bit because um, too much weight had been hung on it um, Little did they realise that it was just a two-thumb job, but the TV cameras in the stadium focused in on the hammer and the stadium commentator was heard to say, well, if you don't know what to do, just smash it with a hammer. So, of course, that upright had to come off immediately, um, be replaced with a new one, recalibrated, which the tech team there um, did remarkably well. And two minutes after we were on site, we were leaving because the new one was in place and they were ready to go again. Soft hammers, mallets, useful. Nice set of screwdrivers. Crowbars. This is the infamous one that uh, was used at the at Crystal Palace to smash down the disabled toilet door when somebody had got locked inside. And to my dismay, the person inside was an able-bodied person. Um, I now have been given a, a metre and a half heavy duty one by Mondo. They left behind for me at the stadium, which um, Peter Howes and I may be using uh, in order to lift some stuck long jump and triple jump boards at a venue that he uses. Um, <clears throat> boards do seem to be getting more and more stuck in their troughs, and it does require quite an effort sometimes to get them out. My yellow duster, which I like to um, carry in my pocket around the facility um, as a, a nice yellow flag for clerking, contacting, trap referees, chief starters, assistants, whoever, to alert them to the fact that hurdles are in place or whatever. Uh, just sits nicely in the pocket rather than having to carry a flag around if we don't have radios. Let's move on to uh, scales for checking our implements. Very nice 600, 650 pound version here. Um, judging by the keyboard and the display there, there is an awful lot of functionality in this set of scales that we probably will never use. The um, supports on the top are very nice, but is that worth 650 pounds worth? 
Um, these ones have now seen better days. It's cheaper, right? Although in this particular shot, very importantly, is the five kilogram test weight. And its certificate is very carefully stored in the office files for checking on these devices. I'll just draw your attention to two things on here, the 11 kilograms by one gram indicator. As I go to the next slide, to say that there are scales now coming in at 40 to 60 pound range. You do need to check um, for three things on your scales. See whether or not they're going to be any use for your implements. First of all, will they allow you to do something as heavy as a 726 kilogram shot or hammer? Very often, these cheaper ones only go to 5K. Secondly, what increments do they weigh in? A lot of the cheaper ones will only weigh in five gram increments, and we need to go to the individual gram increment. I have acquired a couple of sets recently that do go up in one gram and go over, go up to about 15 kilograms. And then thirdly, across the top of the scales, your shot's going to roll off. So make sure your scales has a tear facility, T-A-R-E, which means that you can put something onto the scale and then reset it to zero for when you put your implement on. Okay. Somebody just asked an interesting question about calibration. And one has to ask, as with lots of things in an athletics meeting, what's the level of meeting? If it's under IAAF rules, then calibration is usually considered to be um, every year. Whereas under UKA rules, I'm not certain that there is definitive requirement for them to be calibrated. I would check them with your 5K test weight each year or more regularly. And then if they're out, get them then get them sent away for maintenance and recalibration. Several of the scales do allow you to come with instructions to allow you to recalibrate. Speaking about sitting on top of scales, uh, courtesy of Dick Sharp, this is his lovely garden shed work um it's all sorts of things that you can put on to the um top of the scales and then press the tear button uh this little device here uh you can see where it can take the javelin the shot the hammer discus is all right uh the hammer dick has also got that little additional arm which in the next shot stands up a bit so that the wire can actually be held upright um, Increasingly, athletes are not very happy with the hammer wire being bent and handle sat under the hammer. Pallet knives, useful for out on the track, getting uh, muck off the track if need be. Um, don't suggest trying to get chewing gum off with it. You're better off getting the CO2 chewing gum removing kit. But um, Equally well, at least for a while, at the long jump board with the plasticine helping there. Um, simple little things. Uh, my dustpan and brush, useful for all sorts of little places where you're trying to clear up a bit of mess. Uh, I find having one of these at the long jump board very useful for those splinters and sawdust that comes off, off of the board at times and sand that's going around there. But um, the dustpan itself can work really well for bailing out the trough. As we're at the long jump pit now, do think about what the adjustment key is required for your boards. This is a nice uh, 10 millimeter one, as increasingly boards seem to be adjusted from the top rather than having to take the board out. More about those in a little while. Lovely little 10 pound battery operated hand pump for that deluxe 
baling of long jump troughs. Available from uh, Machine Mart and other places. Don't forget to have your little bag of pegs, very useful for wedging at the long jump boards and your washers for the old style assistance in leveling boards. If you've not seen it before, this is what's in there. You have your trough and your board and your plasticine boards. Uh, and of course, hopefully, you don't see these very often, but those are the two tubes that are in the drainage tubes that are actually in the bottom hole, taking the water out of the trough down into the ground. Quite often they get very blocked up, which uh, gadget coming up a little bit later on. But don't forget your foot placement when you're assisting. My suggestion would be uh, you need two things here. So either my original wooden foot, which I nabbed from a science experiment a kit at school, or people have used the, the rubber feet that come out. So a lot of people use pens. Uh, Richard Weston, I believe his son created these for him. So he has these three in his bag when he's officiating. You can see the, the ruler nicely placed. And he also had his um, his own set of lifters made here, which I think are looking at around about 40 centimetres in length. But next, a nice big shout out for young official Luke Finch, based coming out of Woodford Green. I believe he's maybe in the chat room somewhere um, tonight. Um, he's setting himself up a little uh, sideline here. Uh, email address there. He's making. Um, Start out by making lifters. So he's got three different lengths there. I think it's really a question for you, for folks to determine which lengths work best for themselves um, at different places. So you've got a 21, which is a little bit shorter than Richard's, a 48, which is just a little bit longer. And then a very nice 67 centimeter length one there. Just contact Luke. Um, I just had an email about an hour ago from him say so that it's actually he's now got a, a long meter length spike that he's man he's manufacturing so again his email address is there um, and his website address is there these these items are there so get in touch with our young Luke um, for either of those type of things um, don't forget your different sets of gloves. And I suspect once we do start back this season at some point, um, we'll all be wanting gloves of some descriptions for various functions. Uh, these are my ones for, for raking and for retrieving implements. Um, here's my really long screwdriver. Yellow tape there is marked at 30 centimeters uh, for um, checking the depth of the sand in the sand pit, but then the ones without the tape are very useful in the long jump troughs for trying to clear out those drainage holes and equally well sometimes on the throw circles draining those holes. And back to my Mr. Dick Sharp. Uh, Dick and Luke might want to get together. Um, this was Dick's little contraption that he put on the end of a long spike to enable it to actually hold a tape so that you didn't actually need to bend down in order to be able to read the tape accurately. Of course, we're all fighting fit and we can get down there, uh, but occasionally some of us do have a little bit of back issues, so to help us maybe. And our John Boy, Mr. Askew, I believe is also in the chat room tonight. Um, he's um, He's been exploring getting ready for November 2020, when the long jump rule, triple jump rule changes at the board. And if you're going to use plasticine, it will be a 90 degree profile as opposed to 45 at the moment. So the left hand images show the piece of kit that um, John would probably have at the site to help restore the 90 degree profile. The big one on the right, blue handle, 
um, would probably sit in the equipment room, technical room, um, enabling to um, the tech room to prepare the boards ahead of time. That is, of course, assuming that you we are using plasticine. Um, you don't require it. Um, more of that in a little while. Um, don't forget your runway markers. Uh, these nice ones from Mondo that we have uh, just gives me an opportunity to mention a couple of things. A little additional box here with drawing pins and different colored tapes in case additional markers are needed for wet weather. And also, prior to the event actually starting, the site actually looks neat and tidy. Um, it's one of my big bugbears at the moment that trying to keep the, the standard of presentation throughout the meeting as high as we possibly can. <clears throat> Courtesy of the Hulse household, Mr. Hammond and myself, we've been exploring whether or not we can actually use a camera at any kind of level of meeting at the long jump board. And we found a piece of software that is free to download to your laptop or your tablet that uh, does seem to We've not actually been able to get to the track to fully test it yet. Uh, allows us a bit like a photo finish to actually capture a bit of video, you know, play it back very quickly, put the line on where the board is, um, save the file, save the picture, share it with the computer at the site if need be, take it away to jury of appeal if that's relevant. Um, so hopefully in the near future, any of our meetings will be able to have the technology at the board to deal with the new rule, especially as we have at televised meetings. This is uh, Andrew Hulse's <coughs> playing with some pre-recorded videos off from Osaka 2007, putting into this piece of software, okay? But equally well in, in the back garden, just checking that you can actually see that we've gone over. And as I say, the software is free. We're exploring whether or not you use it with a tablet and its own card, quite cheap, laptop with a webcam or an endoscope camera. Just be, need, need, need to be mindful of uh, weather conditions, um, whether or not um, charging may be required, recharging of batteries might be required, um, whether or not at some meetings you actually want to print out the offending picture so that the, um, everybody can see that the foot was actually breaking the plane. Files could quite easily be made available for jury of appeal if need be. And I'm just thinking going forward that the, the operator of this may well need to keep a card and just like on implement control, just record um, the file name number against each athlete in each round, just in case for ease of access back to checking back. So. Once we do get out, hopefully August, September time, watch out. We may be there at a board playing, experimenting with this setup. Um, my little webcam that I've found comes as such with its own nice little tripod and a little USB cable to my laptop and away we can go. Had a conversation just over a week ago now with uh, John Boy there. Um, looking forward to these boards in that with the rule change, assuming it stays with us, there no, could no longer be a requirement to actually have a plasticine board there. And so it might be, and World Athletics are certainly interested in John Boy's innovation here, that we have one piece of wood as the board which covers the full 30 centimeters so the white board of 20 and the 10 of, the, of what was the plasticine it's one particular board here john's made a mock-up uh, in his garden shed and popped it on the the base plate put a little groove down there across there which may have a bit of color in it to help with the camera distinguish once the board where the end of the plane of the board is, he's 
just need to be careful about where the adjustment holes are and that good old metal flange and this particular one that john made up he considers to be the the setting in place one that would then be very quickly changed for competition um big issue being that these adjustment holes are not excess should not be accessible in the center of the white board where the foot is place it so again watch this space thank you very much for sharing that with me john and um, we'll just step into wind gauges this is a little card i like to carry with me for when people are anxious about the wind gauge or won't do the wind gauge because they have never done this number business the rounding up and they get very very confused about it so i always just say to them take the reading off of the wind gauge put it on the number line here as appropriate and always go in that direction round it up okay so a minus 0 0.75 would be placed there so you go this way to the next full number which would be minus 0 0.7 which is rounding up whereas plus 0 0.75 would be here so you round it up to 0.8 uh although increasingly wind gauges that i'm seeing around now are not displaying two decimal places they're doing it inside uh, certainly some of this brand of little mini wind gauges the officials don't require to do any rounding they just take the single decimal place that's displayed Just watch out. This is one of those kind of luggage checkers, weighing checkers. Um, I thought it would be quite nice for, for hammer checking. Um, keeps the wire straight, but do notice it only goes up in 10 gram increments. So not useful for that and not useful for what this one can be done, which does go up in grams. As per this one that some of you may recall from your school days, science days, that's both a pull and a push meter. That uh, I don't know if anybody's getting into the chat, what they think this one is going to be positively used for. It's there for, I'm not certain it's quite herds, but I just missing the L. Yes, the toppling weights in your hurdles. So I'm always intrigued to see people testing it by pulling where but if you take the, the yellow push me to one you can come from the other side and you can actually push it to see whether or not you are required to exert that particular force and i think it's getting close to eight o'clock so here's the hurdle checking stick that pro athletic did nice heavy duty steel just fits nicely into your back pocket um personally just uh standard tape measure works nicely and i think i'm just coming quickly to the end three or four more slides uh, our track prisms with our little cones there you'll have seen them all that out there that traditionally of course at the end of last year uh, the world power um, rules changed to say that there should be some sort of indicator at the prism at the brake lines for wheelchair racing obviously the cones are no good they've suggested a, a a small colored brightly colored square i found these pitch markers temporary pitch markers that are about 30 to 40 centimeters in length five centimeters in width that work really well they come in a set of 10 or eight nice brightly colors uh, we tried them out at uh, last year last year's anniversary games and the wheelchair athletes said that they were just the right size they can spot them without having to look up too much and the material they're made of if the wheels go over them they do leave an indentation in them for a short while um again coming off the back of my clerking experience in glasgow for the european indoors um medical team there gave me a couple of um blood cleanup kits 
and I suspect that things like this will may well become a necessity at facilities going forward over the next year or so, if not longer. And giant, giant paper clips. I find work really well when I'm in uh, seeding or results. Um, so lots of people have lots of little coloured bulldog clips. I just find that these nice big ones that are bigger than my hand just make the table look more impressive and help me find the piles very easily. They can be written on very nicely. Um, obviously meant there to go against the table to put your stuff in. And finally, cable ties. Um, I've started using Velcro cable ties so I can reuse them in certain places where I need to tie together, pull together lots of cables, etc. especially at some of the TV meets, so stuff there. So you can get these in a variety of lengths and colours um, to help out there. And there we go, folks. Um, there'll be no, oh, somebody just went bingo. I uh, didn't quite see who, who flashed it up there. Um, but um, I hope you found that hour interesting. Next week, um, I'll finish off a few other event side places that weren't dealt with this evening. And I also want to deal with a number of digital resources. Uh, Mr. Driscoll, apparently, on a bingo there. All right. So I hope you found that useful, folks. And uh, look forward to seeing you again next week. Same Brilliant. time, same place. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, everybody, you can um, book on now. It's on the website for next week. So you can register now so you don't miss it next week. And we'll have the, the survey after that one. So you don't need to hang around this evening for that. Thanks, everyone.